Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. You can't make things up because they give it to you, man. These guys are a uh, gift that keeps on giving, uh, to quote the scriptures. So <laughs> this article comes from the Jerusalem Post. So I mean the scriptures. So I'm going to quote from the Jerusalem Post. So uh, this comes from November 4th, 2022. Putin signs law on mobilization of people who have committed serious crimes, Ria Novosti reports. Russian President Vladimir Putin has signed a law allowing the mobilization of people who have committed serious crimes. Wow, so, uh, all right, let's see. Putin also said on Friday that Russia had mobilized 318 thousand people into its armed forces that's from the beginning i guess because they said they have uh, completed this partial mobilization i think there were about 80 some thousand uh citizens russian citizens that were mobilized now putin on september 21st announced a partial mobilization amid a series of military setbacks in ukraine defense minister sergey shoigu said that uh, move with C-300,000 reservists, reservists drafted for service. The, lack, the law excludes those convicted of child sex abuse, treason, spying or terrorism. So, what do you think? Well, I will tell you what I think. <laughs> this reminds me, that Vlad reminds me of this Vlad. All right, you remember this Vlad? I, I got a, a little book here. Uh, I got a lot of books of this guy. Uh, actually, he's my, uh, I don't know, I, how should I put it? Uh, not idol, but uh, I uh, admire a lot. And a lot of Romanians admire this guy as well. So Vlad Cepes, Vlad the Impeller. So I will make some, uh, uh, you know, there are very there are similarities between Vladimir Putin and Vlad uh, Cepes. And uh, let's see, first start with Vladimir Putin. Okay, so he gets people who committed crimes. What does that mean? They have the chance, the criminals, I will call them criminals because they are criminals. They have a chance to redeem their crimes by defending their, their or whatever, working for the government, for the state, for the, because they think that war is a good war. So obviously I will use their terminology, so defending and and uh, you know supporting and doing something noble for their country all right so they can do that first secondly they can die over there which means the penitentiaries by these guys enrolling or getting into the army being recruited going to the army the state will not provide will not lose uh, money because you have to keep them in the penitentiary you pay money from the from the taxes so the government saves that the people might go over there and might win and then not die, let's put it as a win, and not die and then return home as clean guys, right? That's very good. Or die, which means the state doesn't have to feed them in a penitentiary or anywhere else. So it's kind of like uh, uh, Putin getting rid of the marginalized uh, groups or something by giving them a chance to redeem themselves. Remember, even the gladiators in ancient Rome uh, could uh, win their freedoms through uh, good fighting, through killing. And many others, could, many other servants or slaves in their Roman times could uh, win their freedoms through acts of bravery or whatever the owner. And there were certain laws. It was not like, uh, oh, I free you because I feel like, yeah, you could do that. But they also could impose the, the Roman slaves, the slaves in ancient Rome. They could say, hey, I did this, I did this, I did this. You owe me freedom. And they will go and claim freedom and the owners, the masters, will have to give them freedom because they did this, 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 this. Anyway, uh, so this is with this guy who's supposed to now tries to get rid of the bad dudes, the criminals in a way, hoping that probably they will die over there. So that's it. No more criminals in Russia. Now, what did this guy do? I will tell you. There are a lot of um, uh, stories, uh, legends about this guy, and one of them runs like this. When he became king of, uh, 
don't know how to call it. I say Romania, but it was not Romania, Valachia. Uh, he said, you know what? I'm going to, in his mind, I'm going to get rid of uh, uh, these marginalized uh, groups like thieves, uh, beggars, um, you know, robbers, thieves, this kind of people. I will get rid of them. How can I get rid of them? So he sent all around uh, the country, the kingdom as it used to be, you know, people say, on, uh, I don't know, let's give a date. What gauge date? Let's say 4th of July, the US National Day, okay? Independence Day. On the 4th of July, let's say f uh, 1457, just saying, so about that area. Uh, King Vlad uh, decreed that all these people, you know, that were marginalized, uh, he didn't call them marginalized, they say something like being hurt and being victims, something like that. He just lured them in. He said all these people who, I know, uh, were not taken care of, they are invited for a feast. Okay, all that, a party. And he said, come on the 4th of July at, I don't know, 6 p.m. on the, those, uh, I don't know, meadows or whatever, a location. And then Vlad and his people built big, uh, how should I put them, warehouses out of wood, you know, houses out of wood. And he, they put over there uh, wine, they put over there whatever, alcohol, they put over there a lot of food and servants to serve these guys. And everybody came, all these marginalized groups, criminals came, beggars came, all these guys came over there, uh, and including the, I would have to say it, okay, uh, in Romania and in those times, beggars usually had a physical handicap. They were missing something or they were, and they were begging because they couldn't work. Okay, that's how it was. So those came over there too. That's how the story goes. I have to say it the way it was, okay? So don't hang me for that, uh, for telling a story as it is. So all these guys came over there. They sat at the tables. The servants gave them everything, food. They, pack, 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 music, all that over there. <laughs> and then... At a certain time, Vlad came and said, thank you very much, guys. See, I'm your new king. Great. Vote for me. Not. <laughs> and then he got out and his guards closed the doors, the big doors of all his houses. And guess what they did after that? <laughs> Set everything on fire. He didn't send them to fight anybody, to fight the walls of the, of the barracks or whatever uh, those were. Uh, so that's how this bad dude got rid of uh, those kind of marginalized groups. As Putin right now, it seems to want to get rid of his criminals by sending them to die. Well, I just made a little... Anyway, I'm pretty sure that's not Putin's intention, but uh, anyway. Uh, but for sure, that was this guy's intention. <laughs> There's no other interpretation. He was proud of it, by the way. And since then, there was no more beggars, no more thieves, no more rapists, nothing like that in Romania, in the kingdom, because they were afraid that he's going to invite them. Hey, you want to you wanna come to a feast? No, thanks. No. <laughs> Can I work anywhere? Can I? <laughs> That's how it was. I invite you to uh, <laughs> give you some, uh, a little treat. <laughs> no, thank you. I pay. No, no, no. I'm not coming. So, yeah. I don't know if that's true, but uh, with Putin, but anyway, they have a chance to redeem themselves. That's how I see it. Now, obviously, the chance is that you uh, will meet Jesus in the whole process sooner than later. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.